Welcome back to our look at Isotope RX5 when used for dialogue editing. Today we'll have a quick look at three VST plugins, uh, the Clip, the Reverb and the Crackle. Keep an eye out for the instructions for the chance to win a copy of Isotope RX plugin bundle. There's also a grand prize of RX to be won. Let's start with the Clip. This plugin uh, repairs digital and analog clipping and I mainly use it to fix digital distortion produced at the analog to digital conversion stage. Here I have an audiobook project that is clipping quite regularly. I could place the plugin on the main effects chain, but I prefer to drag and drop the clipped audio to a dedicated track to avoid generating any audio artifacts. The interface is very simple. The most important parameter to adjust is the threshold where you can define the level above which the audio gets processed. You can also have independent control over the positive and negative clipping thresholds by clicking on the link icon. We have a choice of three quality modes with varying degrees of processing quality and speed. We also have a makeup gain to match levels if necessary and the handy post limiter to make sure the processed audio does not go above 0 dB full scale. Here I have several clippings in a relatively short piece of audio. You can guess where the clipping is by looking at the waveforms and then listen for distortion. Stand up tall when you're like a sack of potatoes. I don't like that. So I am going to activate the declip plugin on the fourth track and choose the digital clipping preset. Then I am going to drag and drop the audio and have a listen. I don't want to hear that you've been r I don't want to hear that you've been running around and climbing on things. I know. I know. Stand up. For Stand up. For Stand up tall when you're talking. Sound like a sack of potatoes. You're slouched down like a sack of potatoes. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay, so the preset is doing a pretty good job with the threshold set at minus 0 0.8 dB, so there's no need for me to change it. But I will move the threshold to give you an idea of what audio artifacts to expect if you overprocess the audio. And I am also going to do a quick A-B comparison. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Sack of potatoes. Stand up tall when Stand up tall when you're talking. Stand up tall when you're talking. Stand up tall when you're talking. As you can hear, uh, there's a massive difference. I find it quite amazing that this plugin is able to repair uh, very quickly what in the past would have been an unusable recording. Now let's have a look at the reverb. Recording studios are usually acoustically treated and don't usually suffer from reverb issues, so I haven't found much use for this plugin when editing audiobooks. However, uh, it can be very helpful in podcasts and videocasts like this one. You might have noticed the sound of the untreated room where I am recording. Hopefully I can get rid of some of this room reverb with this plugin. I think the best way of using this plugin is starting with the learn option. The plugin analyzes your audio and suggests appropriate values for the reverb profile and the tail length. For best results, Isotope's manual suggests a minimum sample of about 5 seconds starting with a background room ambience before the direct signal and the reverberant tails. Hello, today I will be looking at Isotope's RX5 Advance in the context of voice editing and post-production. More specifically, I will be showing how I use RX when editing audio. Once the reverb profile has been captured, you can then adjust the overall reduction slider. Today, I will be looking at Isotope's RX5 Advance in the context of voice editing and post-production. More specifically, I will be showing how I use RX when editing audiobooks. 
So this is not so much about using Rx. In you can visually check how much you are reducing by looking at the yellow line in the graph. You, might find this you can then try the artifact smoothing slider and the enhance dry signal option to improve your sound. I will place a particular emphasis on the time saving and practical aspects of using RX and the different options it provides to deal with common problems like background noises, etc. Notice also the handy solo buttons for each one of the reverb profile frequency bands. and the familiar output reverb only option. Practical aspects of using RX and the different options it provides to deal with common problems like background noises, etc. Hello, today I will be looking at Isotope's RX5 Advance in the context of voice editing and post-production. More specifically, I will be showing how I use RX when editing audiobooks. So this is not Personally, I am very cautious uh, about overprocessing, so I would tend to reduce just enough to improve matters while avoiding obvious audio artifacts. Finally, just to mention that Isotope recommends using this plugin as standalone rather than as a real-time VST due to CPU load issues. However, I haven't noticed any significant delay when processing audio in real time, so it has worked fine for me. The Dig Crackle module is actually part of the Dig Click module in RX5 standalone version. However, it is presented as a separate plugin in the VST version. The interface is very simple. You have three choices of algorithm quality. The low one is for real-time processing and the medium and high are for offline processing. The strength slider controls the amount of crackle that is detected and repaired and the amplitude skew focuses processing towards higher or lower amplitude crackle. Finally, the crackle only tick box outputs the difference between the original and processed audio. Isotope recommends using this plugin when the audio signal contains many clicks together, often lower in volume. Uh, the obvious use would be on vinyl crackle. However, there are also some mouth clicks that can be repaired with the crackle. Here I have a good example. It is very subtle, but there is some crackle in this sentence. At the beginning of the occupation, a at the beginning of the occupation, a freedom. Of if I open this file on RX a spectral editor, you can see some vertical lines representing those clicks. So I am going to drop the audio onto the processing track and play with the settings until I get good results. At the beginning of the occupation, a freedom. Of At the beginning of the occupation, a freedom. At the beginning of the occupation. At the beginning of the occupation, a freedom of speech directive. At the beginning of the occupation. At the beginning of the occupation. At the beginning of the occupation, a freedom of. It does a great job repairing the clicks without significant side effects, as you can hear. In fact, if I apply FX to new take and then open the spectral editor view again, we can compare the two. Notice how those vertical lines have been minimized or removed completely. Uh, we could try to drop the same audio onto the the click module track and compare results. At the beginning of the occupation. 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 Both work pretty well, but the clicks output sounds a little bit more muffled to my ears. This could be down to the parameter values I chose to get rid of the prominent clicks in the, the click track, whereas I don't have to push the crackle so hard to do its job. A good option to try might be to add this the crackle plugin after the the click module in series, each taking care of slightly different issues. Of course, this is all open to experimentation, and in fact, I find myself uh, trying new things and modifying my setup and workflow all the time. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we will be finishing our look at RX5 VST plugins.
by focusing on the spectral denoise module.